I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 8th of January, 2023, and today we're doing a topic. We already did the vlog this morning. We did a, a breakup today, and today we're going to talk about flights for those of you who are coming to Nicaragua. Now, we've talked about this a bit on the channel before, uh, partially as things came up, and we've talked about different approaches, and I want to do an episode now that things have changed, now that everyone is back, now that we have an opportunity to really sit down and talk about it and give you an idea of what the options are like. Now, this is for people who are coming from North America, that is primarily from the U.S. and a little bit from Canada uh, because flights from other locations have pretty much managed to stay intact over time. Uh, Mexico has retained flights into Nicaragua throughout the pandemic. Panama retained flights into Nicaragua. Um, the Dominican Republic has actually had a few flights here and there, uh, but the U.S. completely cut off flights uh, uh, except for from time to time on Avianca, who I'm not a big fan of. We had some really bad experiences with them. There, It was possible to get in and out of the United States uh, on charter flights and on Avianca. Most flights with Avianca would go through San Salvador, which is fine, but it adds an extra hop. You're flying from the U.S. into El Salvador and then on from El Salvador, which of course you could still do with Mexico and Panama and other countries and eventually get to Nicaragua. But the direct flights from the US were all but gone. Like I said, a few existed with Avianca. They were very rare and unreliable. We had a lot of problems and they would sometimes just leave you behind but so they remain an option, but I, I really don't think a very good one. Um, but what has happened is now flights have returned. And so now we have a range of options. So if you're looking to come to Nicaragua, whether you're looking to expat or you just want to come for a vacation, let's talk about how you can get here. First, there is one airport in Nicaragua that you can fly into. And this is really just true, right? There are no other reasonable options. If you're like chartering a helicopter out of something, okay, maybe. But if you actually are taking an international flight, there is only Managua International Airport. That is your only option. And that's quite easy. It's in the middle of the country. It is a relatively small airport because it's not a it's not a hub for anybody. And uh, Managua is only a city of 1.1 million. And Nicaragua is only a country of about 6.6 .6 million. So uh, this is not a giant airport. It's not tiny, but it's not very big. Flying into it, quite easy. Dealing with customs there can be a little bit uh, extra effort, but it's really not bad. It's You're completely fine. And for most people coming to Nicaragua, obviously flying into Nicaragua is going to be the way to go. You only have one set of customs, only one immigration to go through. Just fly in there and you're in the middle of the country for the most part. You're in the middle of the populated zone. So anywhere that you're reasonably going to go is within just a few hours. Even if you're going to San Juan del Sur, you're less than four hours. If you want to go to Matagalpa or Esteli, you're really about three hours. Uh, Leon, two hours hours, Granada as low as 45 minutes, maybe even less. Uh, so it's it's really kind of a handy location. And there's a great Best Western directly across the street from the airport, which I highly recommend using in many cases. If you don't know when you're getting in or you're getting in in late at night, trust me, it's not worth dealing with a whole bunch of stuff in the middle of the night. You don't want to deal with taxis or just whatever. Stay at the Best Western. Walk across the street if you need to. Take a shuttle if you need to. They, they have shuttles. Just stay. It's, I mean, it's right across the street. You can walk with luggage if you need to. And that means no matter when you get in, no matter how delayed your flight is, no matter if you have problems with customs or not, you are by the airport. Port. Now, if you get in in the morning, that's different. Like, yeah, probably line up a taxi or whatever, go where you're going to go, go out to Granada and do your vacation. But if uh, if you're coming in at night, I always just stay at the Best Western. It, I don't need someone to be waiting for me. I don't need someone to be looking for me. I don't have to arrange anything. And I know whether my flight is delayed 20 minutes or the next day, I'm just going across the street, getting some sleep and then get a nice breakfast and wide awake in the morning. I can deal with whatever travel plans I'm going to have. It's a great way to travel. Um, and I'm not like a huge fan of the Best Western. Just they do a good job and they're in the perfect location. If it was the Hilton across the street, I would recommend the Hilton. Uh, so there are now three American airlines that fly into Nicaragua. Spirit is the cheap one. And we've already seen flights as little as $141 one way. So consider them. Personally, I'm a big fan. They're great. United flies in. They come direct from uh, Houston Intercontinental, Bush Intercontinental in Houston on the north side. Uh, Spirit comes from Fort Lauderdale, which is Miami, but it's not the Miami airport. Uh, American Airlines comes from Dallas, and uh, all of them fly directly from the United States uh, and have a wide range of flight options. So you have multiple times per day that you can fly in, multiple airlines, multiple cities. You have a lot of options. The prices are generally not too bad, and they're coming down. Right now, we're still um, the American and Spirit started in December, United started in January. So the prices on those flights are still a little bit high because there's a lot of people who've been backlogged waiting to travel for a very long time and they are dealing with that backlog. But that's pretty much gone. 
and those who needed to travel did Avianca or, or Aero Mexico or Copa or whatever. Um, so if you're coming from there, those are basically your choices. Could you fly Aero Mexico, Avianca or uh, Copa? Those are your uh, hop airlines. They're going to hop through San Salvador, Mexico City or Panama City. Yes, all of them are options. They're probably much more time. Instead of just a few hours, you may be looking at many, many hours, especially if you're flying Copa because you have to fly all the way to Panama and back. Um, and generally they're more costly because there's so much more flying involved. Uh, but they are options, so you have lots of airlines that can get you in or out. Pretty much, if you're coming from North America, you're gonna wanna come with one of the American carriers, unless you're coming from Mexico, then Aeromexico. If, uh, if you want other options, there are airports that are not that far from the borders. To the north, we have used Tegucigalpa. That is our nearest airport to the north, and it is close enough that you can take a shuttle in. You can either arrange a bus, which I've not done, or you can simply arrange a taxi and have someone meet you at one side of the border or the other. That is a long drive, but if you need to coordinate for some reason that they, that just has the right schedule for you or the right airlines or you have a discount or whatever, that is an option and it is viable. I've done it and it works. Tegucigalpa is a perfectly acceptable city. Uh, it is not the safest of countries, but there's no reason to really avoid it. Tegucigalpa is a reasonable city. It's a decent airport. Um, it's up in the mountains and uh, it's not that far from the border. So especially if your goal is to go to northern Nicaragua, especially the Esteli, Matagalpa, uh, Hinotega region, getting there from Tegucigalpa is really not bad at all. If your goal is something like San Juan del Sur, then you're going to find Tegucigalpa to be absolutely absurd. It's way too far away. But depending on where you're going and what your flights are, it could work. Getting across the border there can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, they are not really prepared for you to walk across at Los Manos. Uh, so if you do that, you may end up with very confused people. It'd be ready for it to be kind of an adventurous crossing. They won't give you a hassle, but they may not be prepared for you because it is basically a uh, shipping crossing point where like like trucks full of stuff goes across up in the mountain pass getting people who are walking across because a taxi dropped them off is not something that they're used to uh, the much more likely option from outside the country is liberia costa rica it is a city that sits just off the southern border of nicaragua by about 90 minutes so it's about as close to the southern border as tegucigalpa is to the northern border uh, a little bit closer in fact and it has um, an uh, airport liberia that focuses almost entirely on north america it's all US and Canadian flights and just a few to Europe. That's it. They don't fly south to South America or anything like that. So you generally have low cost connections there. The really popular one for us is Southwest that flies directly there. I've mentioned all this a lot on the channel, so I hope I'm not being too boring, but I want this to be something that people can find and focus on the overall picture so you can kind of make decisions. Typically, Liberia is going to be just a tad cheaper than Nicaragua uh, to than Managua flights, but you're coming in off the border. So you got to deal with an, an additional border crossing. It's very easy. Uh, that's the Pinas Blancas crossing on the highway. You, and you can just take a taxi from, uh, from Costa Rica to the border, walk across the border and have a taxi uh, pick you up on the Nicaragua side or someone that you know, whatever. But it, it, it's really easy to deal with. It will take you a little while, but it's not, not a big deal at all. Uh, you can also get buses quite easily. I believe you can get a bus to Tegucigalpa, but I don't know anything about the details. I've never heard of anyone who's done that. There are many large buses that do the Costa Rica to Nicaragua crossing, such as the Tika bus and the uh, Nika Expresso. You may be able to take the Tika bus all the way to Tegucigalpa, I'm not sure. Um, and so with those, you have multiple options. If you take a bus across, it's really easy. It takes a little bit more time because you're in a big group with the bus, but they handle all the logistics for you. They do it all the time. And everyone has this whole ex expectation of what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna go through as a group. It's gonna be at this speed. You've got handlers and stuff that are with you the whole time. You're really never left on your own. And you know that you're, you're getting on a bus, off a bus. If other people move their luggage, take your luggage. If they leave their luggage, leave your luggage. Do what everyone else is doing. Get uh, across the border and the bus takes you all the way to wherever you wanna go, right? Right, whether it's San Juan del Sur or Rivas or Managua or Onda Leon or whatever. Uh, so that can be quite nice, but you have lots of options. You also have the option of San Jose Airport. And San Jose is a very large city, over 2 million, and has flights all over the world, uh, but is quite far. If you wanna go all the way uh, back to Managua, you're looking at uh, easily over 20 hours, potentially on the bus. And, uh, and that's, that may not be something you want to do. It's many hours south of Liberia, uh, depending on, on the trip. It can be quite exhausting. 
Um, generally, it's not going to take 20 hours, but it really can if things go wrong. So expect a really, really, really long day if you do that. Uh, but for some people, it's worth it, right? It gives you a lot of um, potentially low-cost flights, a lot of new locations with flights, uh, and it gives you the ability to connect other places. So if you're going in and out of San Jose, you may be connecting on to a trip in South America, for example. They would be the location that that airport would be the location, uh, Santa Maria, where you would want to do that in order to go on to some of those places without having to come into one airport and transfer to another and then fly out. Um, so those those uh, four airports, San Jose, uh, Liberia, Managua, and Tegucigalpa really represent the potential locations by which you would come in by air and then have the rest of your transit be by ground. You could fly into, say, San Salvador, and technically you could take a bus from there, or you could fly into Guatemala City and take a bus from there, uh, but you're talking about ridiculously long bus trips, uh, places that generally they would fly into Nicaragua if you were going to be in those locations. They wouldn't take a bus in most situations. I do. I will take a bus as far as Panama and as far as Guatemala, um, but that's that's relatively extreme, and I'm doing that because I, I don't have to go to an airport at all. I'm getting on a bus in Leon and going straight to those locations. All of the countries in Central America, because I live very central, uh, I'm able to get to by ground transport, and I think that's worth it for me. I really don't mind the ground transport. But if you were to be based in Guatemala, you would very likely catch a flight out of Guatemala City to somewhere, especially San Salvador, and, and fly into uh, Managua because San Salvador has a direct flight to Managua. So flying into San Salvador and then taking a bus is a little bit weird since you're already at an airport that has a direct flight to Managua on Avianca. That is likely what you would want to do. Um, so you've got those four airports, uh, Tegucigalpa, all of them are actually pretty affordable. Managua is probably the most expensive in most situations, but because you're in the country, you don't have to do an extra border crossing, you don't have an extra long taxi uh, to most locations in the country, um, it's going to overall be your cheapest option and your least effort option. But there's certainly fringe cases where San Jose and uh, Tegucigalpa could make sense, and many times that Liberia is going to make sense because it's so close to the border, because it has so many low cost options, because it has so just so much to offer you and the border there is so easy and so many people cross it that it's going to be a really good consideration and you shouldn't rule it out. But at this point for most travelers, you're really going to want to look at Managua um, up until uh, December for sure, and January to some degree, we kept saying Liberia was the place to go. That's where we would fly. Now it's only within our range of consideration. Managua would be the main one. All three airlines are perfectly good options with reasonable prices, great flight paths. And sorry, the camera died there yet again. I'm having so many problems with the camera, both cameras dying. So I love my GoPros, but certainly having a lot of stability issues in general with them. And that's just a little bit of a problem and they're different stability issues. So I can't figure out what it is, but uh, with the GoPro 11, it's overheating and freezing, but it often keeps recording after it freezes. Whereas the GoPro 9 would certainly not record after it freezes, but uh, Anyway, so you've got great flight options. Now is a time to get good, good flights in. You have lots of airport options, airline options, all kinds of things. You're not limited. And I think that gives you a pretty good range of things. Hopefully I covered that well. And, and hopefully you don't find it to be too redundant with, I have talked about it a lot recently, but I need to kind of put it into a context that makes sense and is concise and people can find. So thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Comments below, ask your questions. What flights have you taken? What ones are you interested in? Where do you want to go? What do you need to know about flights to be able to make good decisions for you? And if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee and remember to like, uh, I'm sorry, to remember to share and post on social media and I will see all of you tomorrow.